For more, I'm joined by Stefan Heger, who's director of the Korea Pacific Program at the University of California, San Diego. Uh, Stefan, welcome to the show. I want to begin by asking you about the Thanks, significance of the meeting of the two Koreas, the IOC, through this uh, Olympic framework. How significant is the meeting? Look, I think it's very significant. Uh, this uh, idea was first vetted by Kim Jong-un during his New Year's speech. It was a surprise, I think, to most of us who follow North Korea that he'd be so forthcoming to uh, engage in North-South talks. There are obviously some issues here. He's going to try to divide the alliance in the course of doing these talks, but I think they should be taken at face value for now to see where they go. Well, regarding the parallel talks that took place at Hamanjan, the demilitarized zone uh, at the border, uh, we noticed that similar talks between the two Koreas took place in the past. Uh, some uh, went somewhere, but some didn't really go anywhere at all. Uh, what's your forecast for this upcoming talks between the two sides at the Hamanjan? Well, I think we should lower expectations for the talks that are taking place this week, because those are likely to focus almost entirely on North Korea's participation in the Winter Olympics. The question then becomes if the momentum of those talks and North Korea's attendance at the Olympics is itself an opening. The North Korean delegation to the Olympics is likely to be very small because North Korea doesn't have particular strengths in Winter Olympic sports, but there'll be other non-athletes attending uh, and coming south, and that's where the opportunities arise for further dialogue. Well, why this sudden shift of attitude from Kim Jong-un, the leader of the DPRK, uh, in your opinion? Well, for, frankly, I think this, his New Year's speech had signs of both strength and weakness. On the one hand, he's happy that the nuclear program is making progress, but at the same time, the cooperation we've seen between the United States, China, and other countries on sanctioning North Korea is clearly weighing very heavily in his mind. And if you read that speech, you see there's evidence that he's concerned about the sanctions having stronger effect in the course of 2018. Well, let's talk about the role of the United States. Uh, it seems that uh, it has softened its stance, uh, saying that it will postpone the military drills between the ROK and the U.S. during the Olympics. Uh, how do you read into that? I think this is in part a concession on the part of the United States to the Moon Jae-in administration, but also just simply to the conduct of the Olympics. If North Korea were shut out of the Olympics, it's very possible they would try to disrupt them in some way. They might launch a test. So I think it's just a matter of prudence on the part of all the parties to try to do what we can to keep uh, North Korea inside the tent, so to speak. Stefan Haggard, thank you so much for your insight.